So right now, today we're gonna lay out the foundation. We got some rain coming in about an hour this morning. So we're actually gonna try and just get this mapped out so we can get actual perfect 12 by 16 rank rectangle, hopefully. So we're gonna do that now. So first thing you wanna do is pound in one pin and then we gotta measure 16 feet, pound in the second pin, 12 feet, pound in that pin. And then we're gonna do the three, four, five measurement to see if we have a right angle and then repeat that all the way around the process. Okay, that's pretty close. set up some string lines. And wherever this falls on the string, make a mark. Sixteen feet. So our, our other corner that pin right here come on boy come on down straight down on it not at an angle straight down on it there you go there you go it's probably hitting a root all right so we are still laying this out and we have found bedrock right in our corner which is great because in the bible Jesus is the cornerstone. I believe that's in Peter and then in Matthew chapter 7 and talks about building your house on a solid rock. Don't dare to touch it. Dad. It was just a temporary piece of wood so we can set this post at level. So today we have a nice day, it's sunny. Uh, it's gonna be kind of warm, at least later in the day. So we are going to pour the concrete today. We have everything set in its holes and leveled. Now these blocks I pre-poured three years ago when I poured the foundation for our log house. And just put these brackets in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put four by four posts in here and they're gonna all be different heights. They're gonna come up to the level. And uh, on top of that will go the beams and then on top of that will be the subfloor. That's the plan. So let's get started.
All right, we're gonna wait for these to set up and cure now, and then we'll start putting the post up to the string. While the concrete dried, we set up a new free range area for the chickens using this eight foot tall chicken netting. All right, so the concrete, it's been a few hours now. It's set up enough. We had a nice warm day. So I am just doing some checking. I cut these posts to the right height and we're just gonna do a little mock-up test here of what we're gonna, what the beams are gonna kind of look like. I don't know if those are lined up or not, but we'll try. All right, boys, we're just gonna test this because this is not our beam. Our beam is probably gonna be a two by 10. All right. We're good. Slide it in right on this next mark. Boom. Okay, crown it. Let's check this side. Ooh. This one's tricky. Go that way. Boom. Boom. Good boy. All right. You are correct. Yes.
So these screws are just temporary, we're gonna nail it in, but what we're gonna do right now is mark these, all these joists, we're gonna bring them level. That one's good. So what we do is we make a, I'm gonna call it a Mary mark. So this way, as I go down here and I nail them in, I know that this line has to be lined up with this line and then this is plumb. Does that make sense? So see how this one's not le le not level, it's not plumb. I have to bring this board this way a little bit before I nail it in. Make a line, perfect. Boom. Got it, good job. All right, now we gotta splice one in here on the end. Um, Reflectix foil bubble because I've seen quite a few YouTubers and I'll leave their channel links in the description box below but it seems to work quite well for them uh, one guy lives in Alaska so much colder climate than us and the other dude actually his name, his uh, channel is Kyle's cabin and he's used it on several builds and swears by it so we're gonna try it, like I said, I'm not trying to win any um, insulation awards in this build and we're having fun and kind of just trying out new styles. So we're gonna see how it goes and you know, stay tuned to this channel, we'll let you know how it works out for us in the future. But we're gonna get this stapled down because we got, the sun's going down and we're about to be dark soon. So we're gonna get this done and maybe start the plywood tonight. <laughs> Yeah. 
satisfying, huh? Nice. <laughs> Down. All right. Next one. I That's Max. Boom, perfect. Yeah. Last night we ran out of daylight, so we got a few panels up and we didn't really even fasten them down. We just kind of set them in because these are tongue and groove. So today the plan is to finish off these spots because the way we ran it was we started with a full panel right here centered on eight feet because this run is 16 feet. So we put one here and then two full panels and then one in the back and we got a piece in the rest of the sides. Because when you don't have seams that line up, it's a lot stronger platform. It's a real simple floor to build. And we're going to finish this up, this part up today. And then we'll talk about what's next in the build. So let's get started. Here we go. Boom. Nice. All right. Yeah. There we go. There. You good? Okay, now go up. Okay, down. Down a couple times, it should come off. Just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. Bingo! Yes! Nice work. Wow, perfect. All right, so the floor is coming along real nice. We're almost done. We got one more piece over there in the back. But, you know, when you have this, it's really that and a square floor, which is you measure from diagonal to diagonal and make sure those numbers match up. You're good to go. The rest of the cabin will be level and square. Okay, so as you can see, that was pretty simple. I just need to sink in a few more screws, but I ran out, so I need to go get some screws. Um, but this is the first time I built the floor like this style. I usually hung it inside on the other log cabins that I made. It would be attached to, of course, on piers, but then attached to the walls, to the log walls. But this went really simple, really well. Um, simple tools, it was low cost and a lot easier without the insulation i'll let you know how they got how that works out in the future i'm gonna keep track of the cost and i'll let you guys know at the end but i'm trying to make this on as low a budget as possible this this cabin build and next is going to be the walls and the rafters because it's going to be an a-frame cabin pretty steep pretty tall and it's cool because it works the walls 
are also the roof. So I like that. Looks like we got some rodents under here. <laughs> So today we're putting up the rafters. We had some rain and some snow. As you can see, the floor is all wet, but it's okay because it's waterproof, so we're good. We got one up, we had to make our patterns. And uh, to do that, since I'm teaching the kids, I'm gonna tell you guys too, you may already know, but basically you take your, you find out your, your degree of angle. And in our case, ours is 59 degrees. So you take your speed square, and you set it on here and you rotate it to the point where the 59 degrees lines up. You make your mark and then you cut. And I made a pattern out of an extra piece we have. So all I have to do is line this up to every rafter at the top, make my mark, cut off my piece on both sides. So they sandwich together like this at the top. And then your tail cut is gonna be off that mark right there, off your face cut, your rafter tail. You make a line right there. And then I cut out a piece that mimics that. So if we pretend that this is the bottom to make your tail cut, then you'll take this and you'll make a line here. And that will be the exact angle of degree that it needs to be on to sit on your top plate flush. And that's what we're doing now. So we're gonna go ahead and build the rafters and put them up, put the rafter pairs up one by one. Have a beautiful day. Thank you, Lord. So we're gonna get started on that now. Grab one of those. The tail hawk. Uh -huh. Yep. It's a beautiful day. They deserve to be out too. All right, so here we take one of our cheek plates. Figure out the orientation that it needs to be in, which it looks like that. And then we'll screw it down flip it over, screw another one on, and then go and cut our, our rafter tail cuts, and then stand it up. Okay. Like I had them. There you go, pull it gently. Building. There 
There you go. All right, now we're going to slide. Hey, Mac. I'm just gonna finish sinking in this temporary bracing because we got some weather coming in tomorrow. So today we're going to put up the bubble foil wrap, the rolls, and the idea is to staple it. I got two foot wide rolls and they are 25 foot long, which should be just enough to go up and over the other side. And I'm going to staple it up a few feet, every one of them, all eight of them, and then put up a purlin and climb. I'm going to build my ladder as I go up. And the idea is to have bubble foil underneath the purlins. So there's that, and then an air gap between it and the metal roofing. I'm not gonna do any insulation on this build. I'm testing that, so if you're curious to see how that works out, stay tuned to this build. Let's get started. I'm excited to see how this bubble foil works out. There definitely won't be any rodents because there's not going to be any insulation. So that's a plus. In the winter, it's going to reflect the heat back into the building. And in the summer, it's going to reflect the heat back out through the roof metal. And I'm not worried about moisture because there is above this is just the purlins, which are two by fours and then the metal itself. And that being a two, a two by four, there's an inch and a half air gap there, which is gonna create some air space, dead air space, which is insulating in itself. There's the one.
No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today we've been on lockdown for a couple days because of the deep freeze. It was like negative temperatures yesterday and today where it's about 20 right now, but it's gonna get down to negative temperatures tonight. Um, we processed some firewood today, did some other things, but today I'm gonna try and staple down some more of this and put on some more purlins on that side. We got the, that's just hanging loose in the wind right now. So we're gonna try and fix that up. And, uh, that's probably it for today. The metal roof itself will be ventilated, so it will draw air in from the bottom and it will run up along the underside of the metal and out the ridge vent. The front and rear gable walls will be probably insulated with something like rock wool, so they will breathe. And I'm not too concerned. I'm really excited about this experiment and to find out how well this actually works in heating and cooling after it's all said and done, stick around to the end and we'll find out. So right now the plan is just to staple as I get height going with the purlins, staple as much as I can reach and then put up more purlins. We got three more rows of purlins and stapling and then I'm done for today because we got more cold weather, snow, rain coming. Uh, I'm not going to tape the seams until all that passes and we have, we have some drier, warmer weather ahead. So I'm going to tape it after that and then goes the metal. 
right now it wouldn't make sense to apply the tape because I don't think it's going to get its best adhesion right now because there's still moisture and cold, damp, and that's not really a good environment to be putting tape on that I expect to last forever. So I'm going to wait till it's dry and then put it up. And I'm not really worried about water getting in here now and snow getting in here because it'll all dry and get away. And then I'll tape the seams before the metal goes over it. At least that's the plan.
How's it look? Good. Oh yeah. Let's see. Hello. <laughs> Earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. <laughs> 